Exactly. Like, and the thing is, like, I'm a faith person, and it's difficult um, in the moment to look forward, right? Like, I can yes. tell you, like, this is hard. They are like, it is hard. Everything in this story was really, really like treacherous. Um, but faith says, you know, fear says, what if? Um, faith says, even if. Yes. Right. And so, like, even if it was that, mo- like, looking back, you're like, yo, I'm dim or more whole of Yes. Jeez. Um. But yeah, no, very, very simple. Like, yeah, no. everything. So, so transmitting the with the lecturer. Hey, beautiful people, and welcome to She Is the Podcast, a podcast all about women, their careers, and their cash. I'm the presenter, Kapano. And I'm Nyaki, the producer. On this show, you can expect to hear real conversations with real women about how they navigated their finances as they climbed the way to the top of their businesses or in corporate life. Listen every week, wherever you get your podcast, or download a fresh episode on www.clubsheis.com. to start with this picture ha, 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 ha. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. you see the picture do you see it yes tell me about this picture that picture was so the post in the picture obviously is different because the picture is dated a year before a year before the post but this picture was the epitome of is it the epitome of the top it's it, 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 what's the pinnacle the pinnacle the pinnacle of an idea that I had uh, the day after I got married. And how did it get to here? I mean, the time difference. 10 years. Well, that would have been like eight years. Yeah. Um, so let me tell you how the story started. Yeah. I got, so I've got like hair that is like, I just got, I got really thick hair. Mm-hmm. So I was getting married. Um, and I went to go for a relaxer, mm. as normal people do, you know. I went so he has relaxed at the time you're going for a touch up, basically. A yeah, retouch. going yeah. for a retouch for a relaxer, as normal, normal relaxer vibes. And so John, my hairstylist, was like, "Your head and relax. Have to relax it again." So I relaxed it two, twice in one sitting, which you're not supposed to do. Girl. Anyway, so I ended up with scalp burn all across my forehead. This is pre-wedding hair, um, and How even many days I remember. Is the wedding? Maybe like seven days. Because I, so I got married in Joburg. I, mar- I got married in Joburg, but I lived in Cape Town. So this happened in Cape Town. So I left and then I had to go. And so like I even did my pre, ma- my pre, you know, when they go the and put your, yeah. your makeup on. The, the trial. trial. Yeah, like a few days before. Mm-hmm. And I was still like peeling off. I'm like so nervous. Scalp on my face. You know that? Remember, I don't know if you remember the, like the, 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 the peel that happens. So you get the pimples and then you get. And then it starts peeling. No, it scabs. Oh my gosh. No, the scab. I was scabbing during the Michael the the trial. So fortunately, I, I actually think it was it was fine. Like by the time it got there, but like after that, I was like, there has to be. This cannot. I've be. got heart palpitations from just thinking that. Oh my god, seven days before your wedding. What? Ochela, basically, you burnt. Relax a burn. <gasps> yeah, and it was just like, nah, this can't be it. Um, and then I was just started googling as everybody does, like. What can I do outside of relaxing my hair? And there was this thing that was happening in the States where people were just like cutting ditching, relaxer, ditching yeah. relaxer. This was like way like before the influencers, the before like like before the world went. Yes, oh my gosh. Yes, like. yes, yes. And so I cut my hair off and I realized at twenty three years old, I had never known what the texture of my hair was like. And How so it naturally just came just out of your out scalp. Out of my scalp. And everything was new. How do I, what is this? This is so interesting. I remember I had like a little short thing and then I had to go for like um, like a meeting and it was like, what do I do with it? And so it was just a lot. It People are going to think that I don't, I don't wash because my hair is natural and they're going to just have this whole idea Whatever the of thing me. is, I d- like we didn't even have the language at that point. Yes. I will tell you that natural hair wasn't a thing. It was just like hair, Afro hair. And then um, I think nap, nap, t- nap curly or something started yeah. that. Um, and then I remember finding a Facebook group on, um, I mean, a Facebook group with Wissal and um, like the OG, OG originals. There was like maybe you like... You had to find support because you were just like, I'm here now. Yeah. What do I do with yeah. all of this? Yeah. So I found that there was these things happening where people were just chattering, chattering. Um, and I 
partnered with an amazing person called Lindy Ware and we built this community of people that were just fascinated and interested in growing their hair. That picture, though, is um, during the middle of COVID where that community ultimately morphed into uh, a product that we released called the Wash Day Box, which is our merchandise of that, um, mm -hmm. if I can put it in, in terms, in modern day terms. Um, yeah, and that was me in COVID packing boxes because... People had latched onto this thing called natural and hair. And they were here now. They were at home. They yeah. had to wash their own hair. Well, and they, they also had the language, right? Now we yes. had influencers. I didn't have that. They had YouTube channels. I didn't have that. There was Instagram pages. We were, had an Instagram page of like at 30,000 at that point. Um, and it was just the community of people that were into the same things, which wow. is effectively what community is. And so that picture... I think I took it or my husband took it because our house looked like it was overtaken by, by boxes, little white boxes. And I remember this post because you might not see it actually in the caption of the post, but you had said here, um, that's what you see in this picture. What you don't see is how a few months later I would sell over a million rand of these boxes. Oh yeah, that happened too. <laughs> so we're going to get into that in this podcast, right? That's what we're going to get into. From burning your hair, like your head, your scalp, from relaxing your hair, deciding to chop it all off and just say, I'm going natural. And at the time, we didn't even have that language. Mm. To now peak epidemic, like that. now it's like we're in the pandemic. And then you're at the at the peak of your business at the same time yeah. and now it's a seven figure business oh yeah that happened really all right quickly. so let's backtrack a bit let's backtrack okay, okay. so um geez it's tough to be in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what it's like being interviewed and having all these questions on you i want to i want to go back to who were you before you met e-commerce and before you met online business who was I before I met e-commerce and online business? So um, I was a builder. I'll always tell the story because I think it's an important part of my identity, but also of my future self. Mm. Um, is that I started? So I'm a, I'm a very handsy person. I'm a very I'm a planner. I'm a manager by just I'm a busy busy bossy person. Um, and when I left university, not university, when I left high school, going into university, I was one of those people that. Wanted so initially, I wanted to design cars. That was like oh, Nyaki's going to design cars. You know when people are like, "What is Nyaki going to be?" No, 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 a car designer, interior, okay. an interior car designer. Wow. Um, and I was going to work for BMW, and it was going to be great, and it was amazing. And then I started to realize what goes into design, um, and there's a certain level of creativity that you need to have that I didn't have. Just God just didn't give you that. Yeah, God didn't <laughs> give me that drawing. You know, like there has to like you don't have to be like an amazing drawer. Just drawing the body but of you the have car to be and able the inside to like, and you know, express your thoughts through some sort of canvas. And I didn't get that. Um and so I realized that ish, this thing's not gonna work. <laughs> uh, but I still love designing and I wanted to do interior designing. And so my dad was like, No, 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 no. Interior designing is not a real thing. Okay. No, go and do project management. Um because that'll open the door. And if you still want to do this interior designing thing, then you can then still you can go do it. Deeper yeah, from there. So, um, and because I'm a very technical person in nature, um, I am my dad's firstborn son, which I always love saying. Um, <laughs> I went into construction management. Wow. So I did my undergraduate at CPUT at, as in building. So I have a national diploma in building. And I mm. um, developed into a construction project manager. And then I did an actual set alone project management degree. But by that time, I was just like... <sighs> Yeah, you know. After And then I worked for a little while, obviously. Um, Where did you work? I worked for... My first job was at... No, my first, first job when I was doing my InSurf was at Robbie Properties, mm -hmm. um, which is the company that basically developed Century City. And that gave me a world view into the development. Um, we were building all the houses there. Uh, big, like really expensive houses, beautiful yeah, spaces. Yeah. And I really excelled in that space. Like I'm... I'm, I'm I mean, if you look around my house, you can see that there's a certain level of detail and eye mm, that I have just in general. Mm. So that was like the interior design thing. Like, ooh, maybe this could be yeah. this could be it. Um, but it always felt very like limited, right? It's just like, ah, 
Okay, whatever. It was just only just the touch of it. It wasn't necessarily yeah, the it full wasn't, scope that you yeah, wanted. Yeah, it wasn't like it wasn't as in, it wasn't as exciting or as thrilling as I thought mm. it would be. Anyway, so but after my in service, obviously, um, so obviously in service you kind of get a feel of the whole company. So because I worked for a property development company, um, I was in the property development. We went into some rentals. We went into mm. some building mm. construction. Um, and I made some really good relationships while I was in university with my lecturer. And mm-hmm. my lecturer's name is Ludwig. He, um, there was a post at the at the government, uh, yeah. at the Western Cape Government of Health. They were looking for interns and I emailed him at the end. I bumped into him at some point. Um, we became like good friends and we, I bumped into him and he was like, oh wait, there's this, my department is doing this thing. It's a new department. We're not really sure what we're mm-hmm. like all about. Um, and that put me in the infrastructure development um, department at the Western Cape Government Health. So there we were building the framework, but also managing the process between public works and end user as being the hospital for the Department of Health. Wow. Yeah, so we were building... I can't picture you hard head. Oh, yeah, in no, hard hat, architect, like office, boots, boots, and like mud and foundation vibrating waking waking up at three o'clock in the morning because you have a cast at four o'clock because you can't do it when the sun is up like even this language i'm just like no i'm a new i'm a different person right you don't know me you don't know me um yeah so anyway then i went into the city so after that i moved into the city um but in between that my husband and i bought so we got married and then Mm -hmm. we bought a restaurant like we got married in october and in April, 1st of April, we took the keys for our first business together. Brick and mortar. Brick and mortar. Um, I opened up a restaurant. Even that was a weird story. My husband just comes back one day, home one day, and he's like, oh, there's um, my colleague. I can't say his name, but he's like, oh, my colleague. He owns um, that coffee shop that I always go to, mm-hmm. and he's selling it. And I think we should buy it. Wow. So I was like. And you did. Oh, okay, cool. Sure. Why not? I've only like. Yeah, we've only been married for like three months. We don't really have <laughs> real jobs at this point. <laughs> we'll buy a coffee shop in we our... We don't know what financial responsibility Dude, is. I we didn't know, know what a word. balance sheet was. So I had my cousin but let's, like... And stock control and like no, overheads. Nah, that and that stuff is simple things, man. But you did it. Yeah, I did it. Um, we Yeah, we ended up buying the coffee shop while we were working full time, which mm-hmm. was also very interesting. Even that's like another... That's a, another 40 minute Nobody podcast. stole money from your toe? Oh no, they absolutely did. Um, they absolutely did. It was it was a very um, so I because I come from my parents run a business, so I'm very like I'm not naive yes. in the, in the business process or in the business. So there's world. certain like, things you're familiar with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's very like many many things, and the, even the experiences when I t- when I sh- when I talk to my parents about them, they're just like, "But you knew this was gonna happen," yes. and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew. It just cuts differently, you know. It just, when it's it, yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. just feels a bit different." Um, and so, yeah, so we built, so we bought the coffee shop. Um, you're working full time in construction. You buy the coffee shop yes. and you start running this coffee shop. Y- yes. Yes. And in, this is in tandem with, with, with living and being newlyweds. So then how does the connection happen? Now, I'm, now I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm not seeing this, you know, the golden thread construction. You're for government, right? Yes. And coffee shop. Mm. Where did internet business slide in? Okay, so internet business slides in at the coffee shop. So while we were having this conversation, was a group of us on the internet. I love the internet. I'm like a big, like, if you must ask me what's my favorite thing in the world, it's like, not the favorite, but like, I love the internet because it just, you can find your people. And yeah. so I found my little people on the internet and mm-hmm. we started doing meetups at Twigs with Beans. And that's your business. At the, name at of the restaurant. Wow. So we would do like, um, you know, like we called it coffees and conversations, curls, coffees and conversations. I remember we'd so ha- invite people and we would just talk about our experiences with hair. Yeah. Um, and that morphed into us doing bigger events. The events just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. And then the last event pre COVID we had, had about like 700 people wow. in attendance, which also was just like, why are all these people here? Who do they so know? Just kept on snowballing. <laughs> yeah. So you had this experience with your hair pre-wedding. A week before your wedding, you yeah. cut it off, you go natural. That sends you on the spiral of just looking for other people like you. People who have natural hair, yeah. who need to understand how do I take care of this thing. You start meeting at your coffee shop that it was just, it's it, there's a whole lot of serendipity everywhere. <laughs> like it's just sprinkled with like, it's just like, I'm trying not yeah. to see it, but I'm just yeah, like, don't worry. It, it chance get, meeting with your lecturer, 
And then chants, you start literally. Everything is just now. You look back, eh? like, and the thing is, like, I'm a faith person, and it's difficult um, in the moment to look forward, right? Like, I can tell you, like, this is hard. They are like, it is hard. Everything in this story was really, really like treacherous. Um, But faith says, you know, fear says, what if? Um, Faith says, even if. Yes. Right. And so, like, even if it was that, like, looking back, you're like, yo. Um, yes. Jeez. Um, but yeah, no, very, very send up. Like, yeah, no. Everything. So no, chance meeting the line, with the lecturer, just... then you start working in government with hospitals and things like that. Then your husband chants that the restaurant he likes. In the going toilet. To like they met sold. in the bathroom. Literally oh at a urinal. And then <laughs> And then from the meeting in the urinal. And it just so happened that the coffee shop is like three kilometers from, from our where you house. Stay. Not, not three kilometers, like 300 meters. Oh my word. It's and like, then you buy into this business and then there's these meetups for these conversations about curls. Yeah. And then from there, it keeps growing and growing and growing online. It's still very physical. How did we get online? You like the internet. You're meeting with these people about your hair. So all of this conversation is obviously happening on the socials. The meetups and things are being gathered by the socials, right? It's it's something that's happening. It's a community that's online on the mm-hmm. internet. Um, and so we are planning, Lindy and I are planning our biggest event. I remember it was going to be at, 20, 20, at um, Victoria Yards in town. It was going to be, I think they take a thousand people. So no, they take 10, t- I don't know. It was a huge number. Like, yeah. a hu- like we couldn't have huge we've got our sponsors in line and then the government and then mr president says uh, my fellow south africans we are going into a 14 day lockdown all events are cancelled effective immediately indefinitely so you never had the event you we planned it event. we had the v- event we had to send every like a lot of money back um, people had to cancel things it was fine because i mean it was a pandemic everyone yes. was like ah, we don't know what's happening um but there was also a collective apology yes like, no i mean it was fine no nah, it was fine everybody was like i mean it was definitely not gonna happen um and something says in this what is happening how are people getting their products right before we were we were um we were retailing, we were retailing, but we weren't retailing because I never ever wanted to build a retail business. Okay. Because I come from retail. Yes. Like I just had, why would I, why would I leave Twigs and then come into another business where I have to have staff and I have to have inventory? It wasn't something on my to-do list. It was never something in my, um, but something happened while we were meeting with the, because I met with the Shea Moisture people. Yes. I'm the CEO of Shea Moisture and they came when they came down to South Africa um, and they had this box. The Shea Moisture Box. This I remember box. that. I still have it. Yes. Um, and I was like, you know what? So Every cool. South African must get this. Like, why can't we get this? And so I started developing the process during the, I want to say, it was it was pre-lockdown, I must say. It was mm. pre-lockdown. Like, this was way before so lockdown. So it was like a little bit of an idea that was like building up when you saw the Shea Moisture Box, you're meeting people and you continue having these hair events. So when the Shea Moisture Box comes along, it basically planted a seed. Yeah, that had actually happened the year before because at the event, we had given our our um, our goodie bags were the boxes. That mm-hmm. was almost like mm-hmm. the soft launch of a box. So people to understand what the box feels like and mm-hmm. looks like. So we launched the box there. Um, and the the idea behind it was just an accessible way to, for you to try products, right? Because at the time, um, I mean, I come from like when you walked into Clicks and there was like three dusty products on the shelf. Yes. Um, but there were new products coming in and quite quickly. Mm. Um, and it was like, how are people getting to try this? We, our thing was, we want to get, we want to, and it's always been like that, even with the products, um, with the, with the events, how we sold it to big brands, to the Revlons mm. and to the Nyloticas and to the, um, you know, was let's get your product in hand. Yes. If it's your, if your product is, a, is as good at it, good as you claim that it is, the only thing that you need is to get this in, in someone else's hand. You had access to community, yes. access to people. Correct. And so mm. we was, so now I have the language to offer for, for it, obviously, but we were basically doing activations and in-person activation marketing. That's you were what, just, what I'm getting is you were just doing what was next. You didn't I have just, the language for it. You didn't really truly understand it. You no. were just like, let's just do what's next. Okay, people want to meet, shop. People need products. Okay, let's get them into a box and get it to them. Yes. You were just, you didn't have the language for it. You didn't necessarily know, big idea what was going on. But what was next, you just did. 
it just kept going with it. Um, and the beauty of it is as I'm going, I'm developing the language and the understanding of what mm. I'm actually doing. It's like, oh, this, this is, is activation marketing. This is experien- exper- experiential marketing. Yes. Like there's a word and a yes. whole thing about that. And I'm like, how oh, people can do experiences based in marketing yes. and then my proposals to my pitch decks and my proposals to brands get stronger and we start getting more money now a brand that was like we'll give you 10,000 rand is giving us 110,000 rand mm. and you're like oh it's just because you see the word experience marketing yeah yeah we're uh, so we started positioning ourselves as an experience marketing company and that's wow. how we were getting the buy in from brands because ultimately you know Lever Unilever doesn't need us to sell products for them no. they they put their, they can I mean Unilever can shut down the old yes. clicks and make no no one else can go in they want people to experience their brand yes. so that's what we started doing um obviously then ironically the other brands the 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 the, you know the clicks curl started happening mm. um and i want to say because they saw us doing stuff like that and um, the cape town they got the curls, idea yes the cape the the the, the, the viability of the yes, thing right it was that, shown yes it's to see like oh okay you can create a public event and people will turn up cape town girls are amazing the cape town naturally they girls show up show up like fire they show up, and, and yeah. it was already it was a blessing for us to have started in cape town there were other like the amandas were doing it already mm-hmm. um we obviously just brought in our own thing in collaboration with yes. them, right? And not in competition, which was very important. Um, and bringing that to Joburg was like, it was difficult, but it was easy in that we'd seen had it. Already we had already proven the concept that yes, side yeah. and you brought it in yes. this side. And so we, our first event in Joburg was amazing. I was like, ah, we'll probably have like 50 people. I think we had like 400 people. Come. Wow. It was spectacular. It was beautiful. There were jumping castles. It was outside. It was, I got sick that day. I just lay on my back <laughs> the whole time. But it was really something, um, something special. Yeah. Um, but as I'm doing this, I'm building the language and the understanding. And the knowledge. Of, and the hey, but so what I'm doing is marketing. Yes. But marketing was never something. No. You were learning see, on the job. No, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, guys. I'm, I'm a clever girl. I'm an I do boxes. I, I do, do Legos. Yes. I do. And so this soft, this soft skill of marketing and sales doesn't like land until people start talking about it. And I'm like, oh, is that what you guys study? Just <laughs> you studied all of this for four years. You went to learn this, and you were learning on the job as and when it it needed it. Correct. You were learning it. So while the snowball effect was happening of NH Co. Natural Hair Company, Company, right? As a snowballer is happening, at what point did you... Because you had a full-time job. Yes. And you had the restaurant, which you then closed. We sold. You yes. sold. Yeah. And, oh, okay, at this point, before even NH Co. became a thing, you had already had a business that you started, you ran, it was successful, you sold. Yes. When did you jump into becoming a full-time digital business, e-commerce, digital marketing extraordinaire. Okay, so... When did that happen? We are in Cape Town at the time. We've been, we'd been in Cape Town for... I'd been in Cape Town for about 10 years. Yeah, for 10 years. So mm-hmm. I got married. We met in Cape Town. We got married and we stayed in Cape Town. Um, and I don't want to say the problem with Cape Town is, because that's like a thing, but like Cape Town became very small. Um, as a city, as a community, as a as a business hub, mm. it just became very small. Like my husband's growth was limited in terms of work. Um, I was enjoying my work, but like you know, uh, yeah, it was just a job, right? Yeah, it was a job. And so the decision then to move to Joburg meant that we had to sell our house, sell our business, um, and then move into then what would be full-time entrepreneurship slash working in my parents' business. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And was that jump difficult for you? Things are not difficult. I don't hold on to things very dearly. Mm. Um, I will tell you that like the things that I hold on to dearly are relationships and people, which is effectively the same thing. Um, But like things are things, right? Yeah. Like a house is a house, a business is a business. um, And what we were leaving wasn't, you know, we weren't leaving our homes or our, our business. What we were leaving was our people. We were yes. leaving our community. So, like, in mm. that sense, it was difficult. It was sad. But Cape Town is two hours away. <laughs> um, you know, it's not... And also, like, I've just built an entire community of people on the internet. Like, if yes. I can call people on the internet, my internet friends, how much more for my real friends? Like, I can have relationships on What the made you realize that that was real? You have this community of people online. You guys are having these events. What made you realize that this is a real thing and it can grow into something? When people show up. 
when people showed up at when the event. strangers show up on the internet yes. from the internet you don't know me like it's easy when it's like people from your church or yes. your friends are friends they're real but when yeah. you're on the internet it's like these fake little and like, they just come and they know they're not you in your imagination they, they're real no, human and beings. they appreciate what you've been doing and the stories that come out of it it's just like the impact that you're able to make um like i was like jeez okay now my other question is about people on the internet they become real when they come to you in person how did that go to then a merchandise business did you have the idea you you said that the box you sold from sheer moisture and it planted a seed but you had that apprehension saying but i don't necessarily want to do physical no i'd never i never wanted to become a retail business um what made you go retail covid no no pre-covid pre-covid was the we were selling the boxes mm -hmm. it was the now because we can't do or because events so the thing with events right is that they are capital intensive yes right you need a lot of money and you need a lot of people to make it um attractive for brands and so when brands are cutting their budgets the first thing they're cutting is the events. is the event thing yes. that they're just going to get a little table and they yes. might get brand exposure um and so it becomes difficult to convince people of that but it's easier to convince them to say give me 10,000 units of product and i will get it to the people yes um and so that was always the position and you get into their home so yes. from from marketing talk as soon as you get into somebody's house you have real estate in a person's yes, house. Yeah, I didn't know that. If I'd known that, I would have made a lot more money. If I if I'd <laughs> said that. But you were learning as you were going. If I said that, I'm pro like we wouldn't be here. <laughs> if I'd known that back then. Yes. <laughs> um but that's what it was. It was about building that experience and and giving people the un an an an, an, uh, an unboxing experience. That was my thing. It was like, you know, we're seeing influencers mm. online and you brands are partnering with these influencers and you're giving, you know, they're showing us this luxurious like unboxing. You know, that unboxing thing was huge like before. But I wanted every everybody to have that experience. It's like yes. why is it only exclusive if you've got 10,000 yes. in your company? <laughs> um and so that was the thing. The thing that we were selling then to brands is that we yeah. go to them and say, "Listen, I want to have an unboxing experience with your product." Mm. We're putting it in a, so my only product at this case is is, is a box. Eh? Like that's the only real estate you have that an I have. empty box. I have a box yes. and I'm going to people that I'm saying, "Give me your product, put it inside." Put it inside mm. and I will you know as a as a way to market to them so it worked and the, obviously the communication is different from from brand to brand right big big brands can afford to give you stock smaller brands can't afford but it's an investment for them but but even then they're investing but with the ROI for sales because then they would get some money so i would effectively buy the buy the mm. products for them but i'm buying them at bulk right instead mm. of um buying 20 products at a time i'm buying 100 or 500 or 300 um SKUs at a time um And so that's where the leverage then was able to be drawn to say like listen we've got this community they're exactly who you need right um the the beauty of having a very niche this is actually just a tip is that uh, the beauty of having a very niche community is that you are able to market that community in its nichety mm -hmm. right the problem with being an influencer or like Copano Copano's Mrs Mom boss and she's also and she's also so brands have a difficult time converting that to be like every single person that's following Copano is here for this thing exactly but every single person that's on natural hair co is, is for, for natural, natural hair. hair and so any conversation that you're doing exactly. is about hair how you leverage it then how yes. you talk about it is obviously going to be different mm -hmm. and, and masked in, in certain ways so that was the easier conversation not easy um it's it's a very tough tough place to to play but that's that's how i found myself in retail so now covid strikes you've had this big event and eventing has been the big part yes you're selling the boxes but eventing has been i mean you're about to plan yeah. the biggest event that you guys have ever done yes and then shut down and then lockdown happens um and i phoned um i phoned one of the brands and i was like so listen i have this thing we like i have this idea would you go ahead with it mm -hmm. and she was like okay let's see how 100 do I found her the very next day after the first box. I was like, "So listen, the 100 boxes are gone." Are gone. She's like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> And I was like, "No." So so what had happened was the people really like these things. Yeah. They're gone. Like gone <laughs> gone. Do you have more stock? And now people want more. Well, so more people want, right? Um and and that's how it that's how it went for 10 months during the 14 days of covid lockdown that we had you just kept on rolling out more it was and just more, i think I, the, the brand that i remember quite 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 like 
succinctly because it was almost one of the first ones we did in in the lockdown was Nilotica. And mm. I remember partnering with a lot of the influencers yes. at the time. They were micro influencers now. They're ma- massive now. Yes. Um, and we did a huge campaign and I was at my parents' house and I had to turn my phone down because the phone was just going ding, 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 did ding. Did you guys ding, have the ding, Shopify ding, ding, thing? Ding. Yes, again, the ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. ka-ching. <laughs> and I so it. I put it down and my mom is like, what's that? And I'm like, oh, those are the boxes selling. And she's like, what? And I was Can like, I, please say, I love that Shopify event. <laughs> ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. Yeah. Right, so the first hundred gone. Yeah. You're calling and you're like, I need calling. more. Yes. And then now you're going and you're doing this for how many months did you say? Um, a while actually, a while we did it. I yeah. So it was Tando and myself, um, my two IC couldn't have done this without her. Um, we yeah we were sending out a new box every month. Um, and I think the first iteration was about I think we went on for ten months and then I think we took a break. Um, but we had product every month. We would release a new product every month. And this million rand situation, this achievement, when did that happen? Oh, that happened within the first six months. Wow. It happened within the, within the first six months of the boxes. We did a really, really huge campaign um, with Love Kinks, with Sino, um, which like triggered a huge audi- a new audience, which is also like the real big key mm. with collaboration. Um, yeah, that was like within the first six months. It was, yeah, it was chaotic. (laughs) Was that always the plan? Was there a point where you sat down and you had this master plan at any point when Natural Hair Co. was growing? Was there a point where you sat, you knew what you were doing, and you were just like, this is the plan and this is where we're going? No, never. Um, I will tell you that I've always had a vision for something big. Um, And the vision has always been... So for me, like work and and life um and i'm sure we'll touch on this a little bit later but like work and life must be succinct right and Mm. the retail for me was always because my parents have been in retail business for at this point 18 years um i knew that my lifestyle the lifestyle that i wanted to live didn't attach itself to a retail business to a traditional brick and mortar so i knew inherently that like i was not going to be sending boxes for any much longer than Mm. i actually did because it required me to have a location it required me to receive product it required me to have on the job as on the job yeah right um and so my my move into you know the community building and all of the stuff that i was doing with nh co was actually a move into digital marketing yes and when i started getting the language i started learning okay this is a whole other world that exists outside of um, getting people's products to um, products, you know, p- product in hand, um, and I started telling people about it, and that's yes. where that picture comes in. It's like, guys, actually, fun fact: <laughs> there's a way to do this. Yes. Like it's not; it doesn't. There's a whole by process. Luck. It's not. It's not like yes. a chance thing that happened. Yes. yes. So I got my certificate in um, digital marketing. I became a strategist, um, and I just started learning about it. I started media buying as well, which then landed me the American contract that I talk about. Um, that. Like also, it just cemented a, a piece of information that I had yes. known, but didn't have the language for, and didn't understand the scale yes. and the, have the appreciation for the globalness of it. Right. So I mean, we met at one of your events at the was it employee to entrepreneur. Yes. Yeah. And I remember going, thinking, okay, I want to see, like, is there an actual? Does this thing actually exist in South Africa? And the room was filled with like what a hundred women who were they building laptops? businesses on their laptops. Um, and I was like, okay, this thing does exist. At that point, like the, the, the level of training that they were getting was very rudimentary and I'd mm. already pop- surpassed that. But it was an experience in that all of these people are building businesses and they're From using the, ground the internet yes. for it, mm. which, you know, 10 years ago, or 10 years before, wasn't something that you would even consider um, for, for us. And so that is also the reason why... The we club can. makes sense, yes. right? Um, I suppose you must ask your question now. Because <laughs> she's getting excited. So from building NH Co, yeah. you then went into coaching. Yes, um, I went into coaching. I stumbled into coaching, right? Because I posted that and I g- gave the training. And after that, I said, well, you know, if anybody wants me to help them in their business, you know, let just see. let me know. Yeah, let me know. And then I woke up to like a couple of emails and I was like, well, Okay, cool. This is how much I'm charging, and people paid. 
Um, and I started doing monthly coaching and I also started doing like um, in-person session coaching. Yes. Um, and that also then developed into going back to what I knew, which was building community. Yes. Right? Let me build this community or at least find a community of people that, that are doing this, this that yes. are doing this thing, um, which where we are now. So now as a digital coach, what, what, what made you feel like you started off with one mindset, which was professionally, you were in project management, construction, building. Then you gain on the job experience in digital marketing. Mm. And then you went and got a certificate. Like, how dare you become a coach? Like, how did that even sit in you? You know, that's how people think. It's like, I don't know enough to become a coach, but you had that idea. Where and how did you get that idea? So looking back now um, and knowing what I know about the coaching space and the, just the industry and the need for it is that if you know something and you are able to tell people about it, you're a coach, yeah. right? And that and people are, are able to get a transformation or a result from what you are telling them. That is what coaching is. Yes. And so I think the complication of, um, you know, of what people make coaching seem um, is very is, is a lot and there obviously has to be like a level of credibility which is why it's really important that I became certified for yes. me especially right yes. because I don't come from marketing mm. um, I'm speaking to people who you know some of them a lot of them have been in marketing and studied marketing or work you know um, and so for me it was to actually get the language and get the communication mm. and understand what these people are talking about um, but be able to say no guys I actually I do know what I'm talking I about I do know what I'm talking yeah. about and how has that been as a career point for you as a coach? Um, what successes have you been able to build as a coach? <sighs> what successes have I been able to build as a coach? It's difficult, right? Because you know the, the thing with coaching, and I, you know, the, the thing that I appreciate about coaching is that it's a journey. Yes. Right. It's about be, be, being able to build relationships with your clients and with your coaching clients, and being able to take them on a journey. Yes, there have been people who are like, okay, Nyaki, you know, I'm not making any money right now. I want to be able to be making X amount of money at the end of whatever. And those those things happen, and they have happened. Um, but I think the biggest thing. Um, and the thing that I appreciate and just the way that I coach people is I literally take people from not knowing what they're doing to actually understanding what they're doing. Um, so not knowing to understanding is very different because you have to take them from not knowing to explaining to them mm. and then teaching them what it is. And then they understand to a point where they're like, oh, okay, able to spot. Okay, this is the thing. Because I believe that's how you scale a business, yes, right? Being yes. able to look at your business from a high level um, and helicopter look at your business and understand systematically how things work. Because if you're not able to systematically understand how things work, you're not able to build the systems and then systems are, you're not able to scale at that level. Yes. Right. If you are still writing labels and writing emails to each and, si each and every single customer, you can only ever do that for 10 people. Yes. As, as soon as you get to 300 people or to 600 people, you are either going to lose the customer experience or you're going mm. to lose your mind. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, it's important for me anyway to maintain the customer experience because remember my customer experience was i want to give people this onboarding experience yes. and so every single person that gets a box and every single person that gets coached and every single person that receives something from me needs to get an experience that is mm. identical throughout the yes. throughout the journey yeah um and so that's the important thing of 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 where I sit in the coaching space is being able to show people at scale the system that you're able to build so that you're able to build that customer experience um because you know, I think a lot of the time what we get, especially like people will say, oh, I don't want to, I don't, I don't really work with black people because like, yo, you know, when, when you give them a lot of money, then things start like falling apart. And yeah. I understand yeah. that it's because we're not built to, to think bigger than, you know, what is currently happening. So one to one. We don't know how to create that one to many yes. type of business. Yeah. And so I bring in the builder. So every, so, you know, we started the saying, like the reason why I will always say that I'm a builder is because that's what I do. Right. I take whatever you have in your mind, the creation and put it in such a way like you cannot start building windows before you have a foundation. Yes. Like It's not possible. And even then in your foundation, there's certain detailing and certain elements that you have to consider, consider the landscape, consider the type of, like there's a lot of considerations that you have to take. And so that kind of thinking, that engineering thinking mm. um, put in the digital space. <laughs> That's what makes you scale. You're like the scaling queen. So if somebody comes and is like, I'm selling on WhatsApp through Instagram. 
you're able to say, okay, how do we scale this so that you're not just working with 50 people because that's how many messages you can send out, but you're working with thousands of people and each person is getting the same experience. Yeah. And you're able to help people build that system so that every single person feels that love from the beginning yeah. right until the end. Yeah, And not saying like take people off WhatsApp, right? This is the thing. It's like people are like, oh no, but I definitely still want to get still be on selling on WhatsApp. This is a silly example, but like you can't build a scalable business even on WhatsApp. It's not that you have to move people off WhatsApp. Yes. You can build your automation. There's a you place can build for it a in a way that you use WhatsApp. it. Yes, you mm. can, people can sell thousands and thousands and thousands and millions even on, on WhatsApp. It's just not you sending a message every time a customer walks in, right? Mm. Those are the things that we have, you know, we're in the world of AI and ChatGBT. Like you can build these things. You can still build those things. So you can build a seven-figure business on WhatsApp. Of you, can you can build seven-figure businesses through this digital world and there's different ways of doing that. Yeah. So now it brings us to this part, which is really exciting. How can people work with you? There's someone who's listening to this saying, you know what, I've got this small business of mine and I'm doing the best that I can. And I know that this could possibly be my million rand idea and my million rand business that helped me to quit my job and live the life that I want. But I don't know how to make that happen. How do I get a hold of Nyaki Nyaki? How can you help me get there? Do you still do that? So yes, I, I still do. The form has changed. Um, the form has changed because going back to what I actually believe in, which is community, I landed somehow, some miracle that the Lord spoke to Kapano and said, let this one into your life, <laughs> um, which was, I'm sure we'll talk about it at a later stage, but like going back to community is how I believe people will yes. grow. How I believe and how I work with people is in community. Um, and so how people can work with me right now is that I am now CEO, head honcho, CMO, <laughs> COO, all the O's at Club She Is. Um, which already has been a very interesting um, journey. Also, looking back, you're like, yo, 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 this is God like is good um but obviously you know leading up to it was just like i don't know i'm very confused as to where how i'm going to build this and so yes. how people can 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 work with me is through the club um the first way and one of the ways that i'm really excited we've been mind mapping this for a long time is um i want to build we're building a mastermind within the within the club uh, the mastermind is exclusive for people within the club um, so we're relaunching the club and we're bringing it back, um, which is going to be a low touch community um, in terms of working together. But I know that people want a high touch experience. So one on one, how do we work together um, or at least one to group? Um, how do we work together is through the mastermind. So the mastermind for people in the club is coming at an exclusively ridiculously discounted price so mm. you kind of have to join the club to get the price um but the details will be below here but whatever the price is i can't remember what the what the price is it's um it's the one you know one one week one week group group coaching session with me going through the framework um, mm -hmm. i'm excited about the framework because it's something that we've developed yes. in collaboration yeah. where i brought my scale fr um, framework which looking back i'm realizing it was very very detailed <laughs> um but also bringing in um the original um club she is framework to yes. kind of build this you know club she is framework that says you know, we're going to start with understanding digital um, digital marketing because I think that is the base of any business mm -hmm. um, and work your way through through ops, through systems, through sales, through marketing, through all the all the little things that are important about building a business um, so that you can build your business, but also so that you can build other businesses, right? I'm big about, yes, we can build your current business, but history will tell you that I had a restaurant, yes. right? I had... Um, um, NH Co. NH Co. And now we're in Club She Is. But no piece of myself have I left behind, right? I've always brought, brought something forward. in mm. forward because I've learned a skill. And so, like, skills development mm. is something that is, like... So it's about building that understanding and mastering the ability to start a business, scale it, and have that knowledge for you to do it again to and again yeah. and again. So this program. So this program is exclusive to people who are inside yes. the Club She Is community. Yes. And once they're inside, it is a eight-week program yes. that basically takes you through 
understanding your business, what is what is digital marketing? How do you start your business and scale it mm. um, with the knowledge that we have both gathered from our various experiences, yeah. from e-commerce, personal branding, business branding, um, marketing, and selling the systems that you need yeah. exclusive to the people inside the club at a 60% discount yes. once you're inside the club. Yeah. So if you want to go through that experience in a group coaching format for eight weeks with the both of us mm. join the club and join that mastermind, mastermind. go through that program yeah. and you have one extra gift oh yes because i still have tools left um so we're gonna do some wash day boxes so if you do join i think i've got about 100 could be a little bit more could be a little bit less um but the first people in the door to sign up for the mastermind will get a box delivered to their house what's gonna be inside you're gonna have to find out but it's all the cool things that we love right um so if you're a natural hair curly and even if you're not a natural even if hair you're curly, not because it's not gonna yeah so it's no, a hair no, box it's so, a hair box yes. it's a tool box I, I like that um but the other thing that i wanted to say is like you know you say 60% discount like it's, it's a lot, way it's more than way that way more yes, um, yeah. because my private coaching clients pay me about 8,000 rand a month to work with me for like three or four sessions you're getting eight sessions at like not even half of that so like you yeah no it's it's a lot um it's it's gonna be so but if it's you're, if be you're paying normal price eight times like 64,000 rand you know worth and you're getting a this. way 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 discounted price I'm for that to, i'm trying to make bank with this money but anyway um but the, the the important thing is like i want people to i want as many people to join but obviously we're gonna we're gonna cap the number at some point so be quick um but it's important because I think a lot of us started the year with these new year, new me, new year, new resolutions. And what helps and why I love community. I'll speak about community in your relationship, like mm -hmm. with church and stuff. And mm -hmm. I'll speak about community like in your business is that it holds you accountable. Yes. Like it's really difficult to do this, this thing alone. Like I don't want to say it's impossible, but like it is hard to do it alone. To do it alone. And so in community, you will thrive. So join um, club she is find all the details below um and we will see you inside this is like one soft opportunity we'll probably do it again but like much later maybe ne next year again yeah um but if you're not ready for the financial commitment don't come if you're not ready for the um for the discipline that it's going to take to be a part of this program please don't come like, yeah i don't want people to sign up and then you know like you Flake. fall off at the end yeah. of you know at the end of two weeks um we're going to be very accommodating and there's going to be like a lot of work that you need to go through it but this is the idea is that you will walk into the club not knowing what a sales funnel is and you will walk out with your own money generating sales funnel so like yep that's that's my value offer there it's to say you don't know what this is but you're going to leave with something that makes you money but like it's gonna it's gonna come with a lot of work so for the first hundred or so who join yeah. you get that extra gift once you join the club make sure that you join the mastermind at a hectically discounted rate for you to work with the two of us in an eight week program to show you how you can build that business of yours market scale it and replicate it as many times as you want to so thank you so much Nyaki, for the partnership and this podcast that was actually never supposed to happen no. but i'm happy i'm happy yeah, we'll see. We'll see.